Hello, anatomy classes. Uh, so you have an assignment that's due Tuesday and uh, you're probably really confused on how to do it. So you just saw me drawing out the respiratory system in a time lapse and now I would like to show you uh, what we're gonna do here as far as the assignment goes. So check it out. First of all, check out that pretty awesome yard. Check out my house. Don't TP it. All right, let's get started. All right, everybody. Here's a rough draft of the respiratory system. We're gonna start up here being a dust particle coming in through the anterior nares into the vestibule, which is the open area inside of your nose where you can get your finger to get boogers. That leads you into the nasal cavity proper, which contains a number of structures. First of all, the floor of the nasal cavity is made of portions of the maxilla and the palatine bones. And the roof of the nasal cavity that separates the nasal cavity from the brain is made up of the ethmoid bone. Now you'll notice coming from the brain, there's this yellow nerve that is the olfactory nerve. And notice how branches of it penetrate through this part of the ethmoid bone that is known as the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. Now, down the middle of your nose, there's this wall called the septum. Right? And you can feel that when you touch your nose, there's a wall right down the middle. That septum is made of parts of three different bones. The upper portion is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. The middle portion is the vomer. And the bottom portion is the palatine process of the maxilla. Now, on the sides of your nasal cavity, so imagine this was a head cut in half, and this would be, these blue things would be on the far wall of the nasal cavity behind the septum. These would be the things hanging off the side. These are known as the turbinates, and their job is to help swirl the air around so as it passes through the nasal cavity, it comes in contact with the respiratory mucosa. All the air is gonna pass through this opening back here called the posterior nares, and that leads us into this tube which we commonly call the throat, but anatomically is known as the pharynx. The part of the pharynx here behind the nose is called the nasopharynx. The part of the pharynx here behind the mouth is called the oropharynx. And the part of the pharynx here, right outside of the larynx, is called the laryngopharynx. Up in the nasopharynx, you have this opening that leads out to your ears. There's a tube called the auditory tube that goes out to your ears, helps you equilibrate the pressure when you go up and down into the mountains or when air pressure changes. This is your larynx, which leads down into your trachea. And notice how it separates from your esophagus right here. And there's this flap called the epiglottis, which protects the opening to your larynx and keeps food from getting in there. Inside the larynx, there's two flaps of tissue known as the vocal cords. You notice I drew a really big Adam's apple. You may think, well, guys have Adam's apples, but girls don't. Well, that is not true. The larynx is actually made of nine pieces of cartilage, and the one that sticks out is called the thyroid cartilage. Uh, the thyroid cartilage just happens to be much bigger in men. Men's larynxes get big, bigger when they hit puberty. It's one of the things that testosterone does is makes the larynx grow. It makes the vocal cords thicken, and that's why the voice gets deeper. So, air passes through the larynx and the vocal cords down into this long tube called the trachea, which then leads down towards the lungs. The trachea splits into these two tubes called bronchi. Bronchus is singular. The first branch is called the primary bronchus. The second branching are called the secondary bronchi. The third branchings are called the tertiary bronchi. And then they branch smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually microscopic tubules called bronchioles carry the airways in even to even smaller microscopic tubules called alveolar ducts, then finally into the alveoli where the oxygen is absorbed. This here is home plate in our driveway. My son can never seem to find it when we play wiffle ball.